Number 31 and 7.2 has to do with uh, fundraising, money, and stuff you sell for money. Okay. Um, so can someone tell me like just some stuff about this problem? Like what's going on? You don't have to tell me any number. Parents are trying to sell popcorn and raise money. Are they selling just popcorn? No popcorn and pretzels. Yeah, it gotta be two things, right? That's what systems of equations is all about. So popcorn and pretzels. So they're gonna sell popcorn and pretzels for a certain amount of money. Right? They're gonna make a certain amount of money total. Uh, there's gonna be some relationship between the number of pretzels and bags of popcorn sold. So let's read on. Um, so 250 for a bag of popcorn. So 250 per uh, bag of popcorn. I'm gonna make sure when I do up those initials and spell something. Two dollars for a pretzel. Just two dollars for a pretzel. Uh, so, 336 total. Which means that uh, maybe they sold 148, 148 pretzels. Right. If they just sold 148 pretzels, would that be enough to make $336? Just by mental math, it's not strong. So uh, two times 148, 148, 168 pretzels, would that be enough? Yes. Right, so I calculated there, two times, two dollars times 168 pretzels, $236, right? Who's to say that didn't happen? It could have. Could have happened? Um, except, except it says, says something else. Sell twice as many bags of popcorn as pretzels. As many popcorn as pretzels. Okay, let's try to get a feel on what that sentence means. Did they sell more pretzels or did they sell more popcorn? They sold more popcorn. Walk us through that. Why? Why do you think it? it, it it's uh, more popcorn than pretzels. So they sell twice as many popcorn as they did pretzels. Okay. So I'm, I'm having to work through this because this is the kind of sentence that I would use to write an equation and get the equation kind of backwards. Okay. I, I see in there there's something like a two times some number is some other number. It looks like right twice as many two times something. But I would get it backwards often. Okay. So to think about it in terms of okay so. Does that sentence make me feel like there's more popcorn or pretzels? Well, twice as many popcorn. Twice as many bags of popcorn as pretzels. Right? Popcorn is more. How much more? Twice as many. Twice as many. If I told you how many pretzels they sold, let's say they sold 16 pretzels. How many bags of popcorn would that mean they sold? They sold 16 pretzels. They would sell twice as many popcorn as they should be having. Well, times two would be twenty-four. Sixteen so times two would be thirty-two. Okay, so we got a good feeling about what the relationship between the pretzels and the popcorn, or there's more popcorn than pretzels. Uh, we should probably give them some names like X and Y. What could X represent? Uh, popcorn. Popcorn, the the number of bags of popcorn, as opposed to like the price of popcorn, because we already know that. We already know the cost. 
And y would represent the number of pretzels then, right? That, that would make sense. We need to write two equations. We've been talking about one of the equations quite a bit here as we talk about this sentence. If I tell you the pretzels, you can find the popcorn, right? What would you do with the number of pretzels to figure out the number of bags of popcorn? Multiply by two. So two times what? Y. Yeah, Y represents the pretzels. And that is the same as, it should give us what? X. X, the number of pop bags of popcorn. Okay, when we get better at this, I'm gonna start writing stuff down. Not getting any one person. There's lots of people who need that advice. Okay, so there's a relationship between the number of bags of uh, popcorn and the number of pretzels. Then there's the money side of it. They made how much did they make? A lot of times when a total amount of money is involved, it should be there should be a way to calculate that total amount of money, right? Meaning that 336 should be equal to some expression, right, where I calculate out that, that total amount. Okay, I'm going to make some, bad, some, some money off of popcorn, some money off of pretzels. Let's talk about pretzels. Say, let, let me say they, they sold 15 pretzels. They sold 15 pretzels. How much money do they make off of those 15 pretzels? Thirty, right? How'd you get that, Branson? Uh, I just multiplied fifteen times two. Fifteen times two, two, do two dollars a pretzel times fifteen pretzels is thirty dollars. Well, what if they sold? Well, how many pretzels did they sell? Right? We don't know. But how are we representing the number of pretzels until we do figure it out? Why, right? Number of pretzels, right there. So two times the number of pretzels, which we just said was why. Times y. Plus, just x, just the number of bags of pretzels, or bags of uh, popcorn. We gotta add the money, right? This is the money we make off of pretzels. How do we calculate the money we make off of bags of popcorn? Right. Let's say we sell um, two bags of popcorn. Two bags of popcorn. If two bags of popcorn were sold, then how much money did they make off of those two bags of popcorn? Four bucks? Four bucks? Look at the bag of popcorn. How much does the bag of popcorn cost? Two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, two. Uh, and if you sold two bags, right, that's two fifty and another two fifty, that's five bucks. Okay. How about if you sold four bags of pretzels? Four bags of four, sorry, well, four bags of popcorn. Oh, I keep saying pretzels, but I mean popcorn. Four bags of popcorn. How much money do you make off of four, out of, off of four bags of popcorn? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Two fifty times four, right? So the amount of money that we make off of popcorn would be two dollars. Two dollars and fifty cents times an x. Times an x, right? Not just plus yeah. x, not minus an x. We don't want to take money away. We want to add money up. Now we have two equations, and we have a relationship between the popcorn and the pretzels. Two times popcorn is the same as, or sorry, two times pretzels is the same as a, as a popcorn. So I can replace this popcorn with two pretzels. I can replace x with two y substitute. So we make that substitution. Because these x's are exactly the same. This x is equal to 2y, so this x could be equal to 2y. Clean this up a bit. 336 equals 2y plus 2.5 times 2y is what?
second. Why is 48 mean what about this? Yeah, 48 press. 48 press. I'm imagining. Yeah, they always have. Yeah. They, they, they put like big grains on it. Yeah, they do. It's like from the Dead Sea or something. <laughs> Which kind of helps all <laughs> So if they sold 48 pretzels, then how many bags of popcorn must they have sold? Double that. Double that. I love That's exactly what I wanted to hear. And this equation says it. This sentence says it. Our brain tells us because we talked about it so much. Double the pretzels, you get the bag of popcorn. So double 48, you get 96. 96 bag of popcorn, 48 pretzels. All right, so I have a question. Great. If they say like twice or anything like that, like for that, uh -huh. is it always going to be like how it is, like x equals or like y equals x times 2 or something like that? If they make a simple statement like that, that this is twice as many as that, then yeah, there's going to be some uh, equation that two times one of the things is equal to one of the other things. But do you do that immediately, or do you like have to go through a process and like, find that out? Like, when you do it? Well, I'll say this. I'm not sure if it's going to answer your question. But if I see something is twice as many as that other thing, I know that it's going to be like two times x equals y, or two times y equals x. But until I understand what x and y represent, and I can be sure that I'm multiplying the right thing by 2 to get the other thing. <coughs> I guess the process of thinking about which thing would I multiply by 2 to get the other thing, that's the process. So I might say, yeah, go uh, through. I get that. So I was thinking like you had to figure out what y was first and multiply by 2. Well, we do. Why? I mean, we did do that. No, I mean, like But no. writing that equation would be, yeah. that would come before that. Okay. Writing that actual equation would, become, would come before actually figuring out how many Um, so that's 30 more. Any other questions? I figured out what I did wrong. Okay. It's not good there. Well, the next one was 30. 36. 36. Not. Yeah, 36. Quarter. As with most of these problems, it's possible to not write a system of equations and just figure out how many of each thing there are. Okay. But as with every new skill and every new topic we learn, as I, I say many, many times throughout, and will say many times throughout my career, just because it's possible to do it without using the skill that I'm trying to teach you, okay, uh, doesn't mean you should. You should use this opportunity when the answers are straightforward, right? Like whole numbers or if they're, they're fractions of decimals or not, they're like 0.5 or 0.25, that's a big deal. Okay? I can write a system of equations that has really weird solutions and that would be very difficult to just guess and check. Okay? But why? Okay, why would I do that to you when you're just starting to learn systems of equations in the first place? They make the answers easy to, like, easy to understand and even easy maybe to guess them, okay? But as we use that old skill of just guessing and checking, we try to leave it behind and learn a new skill, okay? So although you can say like, well, she, what if she had this many quarters? I mean, she has said this many dimes, oh, but that doesn't work, so I'll have more quarters or fewer quarters, and I'll make it work. Let's, let's learn to uh, use a new skill to find those solutions. So she has dimes and quarters only. Um, she has three more dimes. Three more dimes than quarters. Three more dimes and quarters. How many quarters does she have? So she's got 450 made of only quarters and dimes. Okay, so like only 25 cents and 10 cent pieces. I think this 450. All right. Uh, and she has two more quarters and dimes. So three more dimes than quarters. So which is there more of dimes or quarters? There's three more dimes. So yeah, pretty straightforward. That was that'd be pretty hard to, to get mixed up. So when you write that equation, even though it's it, it seems pretty straightforward, when you write that equation, I 
personally, my experience was I wrote that equation backwards a lot. I know there's like a plus three involved, right? But I would like add three to the wrong thing, so I gotta think about it. Uh, and we should probably give them names, right? What are we looking for? X would be representing what? Dime. Okay, X represents dime, like the number of physical or coins. Exactly. It's the number of quarters. Good to write these down. So you can go back and you solve for Y, and you can remind yourself what Y represented quarters. Okay? X plus three. X plus three plus Y equals plus Y. I'm oh, sorry. Y times three. I mean, Y. Y plus three and y plus x plus equals x. four four dollars and fifty cents. So y represents a number of quarters, like four oh, or four. I have right the first time. Sorry, I was thinking of the multiplication. Well, okay, so what do we have? It's x plus three uh, plus y equals four dollars and fifty cents. So that's a Exactly the same thing as what you just said, except for you said y plus three plus x. Remember, x is just a number of dimes and y is a number of quarters. So if I add just a number of dimes plus quarters plus three, I'm not going to get a dollar amount. I'm just going to get a number of things. You're trying to put all the information in one equation. You have two equations to write. So this x plus y equals four dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Remember though, what x and y represent. We're close with this, but x is just the number of quarters. Oh, sorry, x is just the number of dimes, and y is the number of quarters, right? If I had uh, four quarters and three dimes oh, here, ten cents, and twenty-five. Okay, I'm sorry. So we need to we need to somehow take the number and turn it into a dollar value. Uh, ten cents times so x. Ten cents times x plus twenty-five. Sense. If I have uh, five dimes, five dimes times 10 cents is 50 cents, right? Now I know how much the dimes are worth. If I have six uh, quarters, mm -hmm. six times 0.25 is going to be 1.5, right? And so I'm like, oh, the 50. So now I have a way that I've converted the number of dimes into a value, a dollar value, same for quarters. And when I add up those dollar values, it adds up to four. So I've talked about this. Right? And I've used the value of dimes and quarters. But um, I haven't used this equation. There's three more dimes and quarters. Uh, not three times more, but there's three more. So plus 0.30? Uh, plus 0.3? So well, it's I got true that the dimes that <coughs> you have more of are worth 30 cents, but I don't know that that's something we need to use. Well, I gotta tell my kids, like, open parentheses, 0 0.30 plus 0.10x, close parentheses, plus y, plus 25y. equation first based on this information. Three more dimes and quarters. Here. Uh, let's say that she has four quarters. Four quarters. How many dimes does she have? Three more than four. How many? So that would be like seven. Okay. Uh, let's say she has uh, 12 quarters. How many dimes would she have? Fifteen? Fifteen. Fifteen. 
I guess the other way, what if she has uh, 20 dimes? How many quarters does she have? So you have the equation is like working in your head. You just haven't written it down, right? Can I give you the number of quarters and you tell me dimes? Yeah. If I tell you quarters, can you tell me dimes? If that's possible, you have an equation. <coughs> it's just a matter of writing it down. Okay. So me telling you how many quarters there are. What represents quarters? Y. Y represents quarters. Okay. So if I tell you quarters. Right? You're going to use this to find dimes, right? What are you going to do to this number? Just did it twice. Uh, gave you the quarters. What did you do with the number of quarters? First thing Mul you multiply them. Let's try again. I add three to the number of quarters. They go without me. You take that number and add three. When I gave you four, you told me seven. When I gave you 12, you told me 15. If I told you 20, you tell me 23, right? You're just adding three. What would be three x? Uh, so I what do you do? it all to one again. Yeah. So you're just adding three on, and what does it give you when you add three on to the number of quarters? Uh, how many dimes? How many dimes? So if I add three to the quarters, it'll be the same as x, the number of dimes. It's almost difficult to do, to make yourself do less work to try and write a less complicated equation. It feels like it needs to be super complicated, but it doesn't need to be that complicated. Add three to the number of quarters, you get the number of dimes. There's three more dimes than quarters. And be careful because like, it, it would be too difficult to say, okay, x plus three equals y, because there's three more, right? And you can get kind of mixed up. That's why I just tell yourself how many are are there more of, right? Well, dimes. There's more dimes, okay? And that makes sense. This is it's gonna be bigger than y because this is y plus three more. Okay, so make sure that relationship is correct. So now we have x is equal to y plus three. We could have also done at y equals x minus three, right? Because I can give you the dimes and you can give me quarters by subtracting three. But here we have x is equal to y plus 3, so x and x are the same thing, so I can replace this x with y plus 3. That gives us 0.10 times y, y plus 3 plus 0.25y equals 4, 5. <coughs> okay. You guys run it back, solve that for y. Well, actually, well, I've answered the question. The question actually is phrased how many quarters does she have, not how many both does she have. So we'll have it. We'll just solve that. So you know, for a place to start, you can start by distributing. So if we distribute the point 10, we get point 10y plus point 3 plus the point 25y equals 4.5. Point 0.10y plus 0.25y, right, they're like terms, so it gives us 0.35y plus the 0.3 that we still have equals 4.5. Now what we do, try to get y by itself here. Subtract 0.3. side, right, because 0.35 divided by 0.35 is a 1, 1y, one that's just y. Divide this by 0.35, and what do we get? 12.86. 12.86. Mm -hmm.
Well, y is 12. Well, y is the number of quarters. We decided that y would represent quarters. So she has 12 quarters. Question one is how many quarters does she have? The answer is 12. How many dimes does she have? 13 dimes. Because she has three more, right? I even I gave that as a hypothetical just a few minutes ago. What if she had 12 quarters? So she would have three more dimes. She had three and 15 dimes. 12 quarters and 15 dimes is the only combination of quarters and dimes. That gives you 450 while also having three more dimes and quarters. Okay. Now, this review, I want you all to uh, do your best. Okay? Then we'll just work through it together. As we said, to write equations that are like almost simpler than we might think they need to be. Right. So she goes to the, the art store, buys, she spends sixteen dollars. Like she hands over a sixteen dollar bill to the cashier for a combination of paint and brushes. Tubes of paint, and brushes. Two kinds of things she buys: tubes of paint, and brushes. Total comes to sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollar bill. Uh, each tube of paint costs three dollars. Okay, so if I were to be in the store, let's see, tube of paint, the sign above that tube of paint would be three dollars. Okay, a brush, one brush. If she bought a tube of paint and a brush, how much would that be? Yeah, just one tube of, tube of brush, tube of brush, tube of paint, and one brush would be three dollars and fifty cents. If she were to buy uh, two tubes of paint and a brush, how much would that come to be? Six dollars and fifty cents. Okay, she would buy uh, nine tubes, nine of these. Without telling me how much the total is, I'm going to ask you to tell me how you figure it out. How do you figure out how much the total is? You're the cashier, your cash register is broken. Which two numbers? Uh, so like three times. Uh, three times. Nine. 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 27. So you just add 27 times plus whatever, 7.7. Seven Okay, 50 cents times yeah, seven. Seven. And that's your total, right? Yeah. That's your total. So you can figure out this total, 27 plus uh, 350, right? 35 cents. 30. No, $3.50. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> that gives you your total, right? Yeah. We all know that. How do you calculate the total? Do we know how many tubes she's buying and how many brushes she's buying? No. So she's buying twice as many number of tubes as she's Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do we know the total though? Yeah. What is it? Sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars. Do we know how many brushes she's buying, or how many tubes of paint she's buying, how many brushes she's buying? Um, no. So in the meantime, we'll call them x and y. X and y. Look at that. We wrote our first equation just by hypothesizing how we would calculate the total for a given number of tubes and brushes, right? So instead of nine and uh, seven, there are x and y. X tubes of tooth, I keep wanting to say toothpaste. X tubes of paint times three dollars plus Y brushes times fifty cents should come out to sixteen dollars. Now she also buys twice as many brushes as tubes of paint. So what's there more of brushes or tubes of paint? Yeah, twice as many brushes as compared to tubes of paint, right? So in other words, gonna be like. Two times something equals the other thing. Would you multiply the tubes by two or the brushes by two? Uh, twice oh wait, sorry, as no. many brushes as tubes. So two times x, two times this thing equals this thing. Equals y. 
two times the, the, the number of tubes equals the number of rushes. Now we have an equation. We have two equations, right? Y equals 2x. Can anybody see any way to get better at this than practicing and practicing and practicing? Wait, what'd you call x and what'd you call y? Well, y is rushes, so must, up here must say x is, is tubes and stuff. Okay. So you might have two y equals x as long as the, the x and y are swapped up there. Mm -hmm. uh, y equals 2x, so y will be replaced by 2x. So we got 3x plus 0.5 times 2x equals 16. 3x plus What's 2 times 0.5? Uh, 10. Well, 1. Two, two. 1, yeah, yes. one, one x. So 4x equals 16. x equals... Oh, uh, 3. Sorry, 4, 4. Divide by 4 on both sides. So I had 16 by 4, we get 4. Okay, so we bought uh, 4 tubes of paint. We bought four tubes of paint, then how many brushes must we have bought? So two. Wait, is it twice as many brushes or twice as many? Uh, to scroll up and find out. Uh, well, I mean, even we've already kind of recorded that information in this equation, right? Two times x equals y. Oh, so we can just put it right there. Two times x equals y. Y equals eight. Four brushes. Oh, okay. Or sorry, four tubes of paint, eight brushes. I can tell you, there's just no way to get better at this than to practice a lot. Practice a lot. But you'll notice there's a lot of kinds of problems where it's like we bought so many of these things, we bought so many of those things, and these things, there's twice as many of those things, and there's three times as many of those things and those things. And there's three more of those and those. And a lot of times we'll get a dollar amount times the number of the things plus another dollar amount times the number of the other things equals the total dollar amount. And then some kind of relationship between how many of the one thing there is compared to the other. If you were going to write a problem that involves money, not wind up with two equations like this. So imagine a lake. All right, are you imagining that lake? Great. Sure. I want you to imagine a lake because the water is still it's sitting there. Okay. So it's more of a pond? Excuse me, slowly being here. So let's say in this lake is somebody in a kayak. in the kayak, and they've got, what's it called, a paddle or, a, or an oar in the kayak? It's an oar. An oar in a kayak? No. A paddle in a canoe? No, uh, category. It's an oar in a kayak. It's a paddle. Paddle? What about a canoe? <coughs> There's not 30 in the boat. There's 30 in the boat. Oh, oars oars are the ones that you have. Oars? That's just one side of that thing. Yeah, and then paddles. So there he is, or she, I don't know. Uh, so in this lake that's still, or pond that's still, or pool, whatever, it's in the still water, uh, this person can move forward uh, at a certain speed. We don't know that speed. Okay. Uh, but this person could, could measure how fast they're going, but maybe they forgot. 
Well, they just could find their speed. Like somebody could stand on the radar gun and potentially scream. I don't know how fast they go, but just, just say they go that. They they go a certain speed. Okay. So I'm going to refer back to their speed and still water. Okay. That's what I mean. If the water's not moving, therefore speeding up or slowing down the person, right? They have a certain speed and still water. All right. Write this down. Okay. Well, at least ready to write something down. Okay, so this person wants to know how fast they're able to paddle their canoe, uh, but they've forgotten to have somebody measure how fast they can go. Okay, so now they're at the river. Okay. And the river flows, right? So they're going to measure their speed in the river, but that's going to be problematic, right? Because if they measure how fast they're paddling in the river, then what, what's the problematic part about that? Yeah, are they going upstream or downstream? And either way, if I measure it going downstream, I'm going to be going faster than I'm actually able to paddle. If I'm going upstream, I'm going to be fighting it, and I'm going to be going slower than I'm actually able to go, right? Okay. But, well, this is, the, this is what she is doing. So the river's flowing this way, and they don't know how fast the river's flowing either, or how fast that is. But uh, they do know that uh, as she paddles this way, right, her speed and the and the current, the speed of the current, they know is uh, let's see, I can measure like this direction as she's paddling this direction. Um, nineteen, let's call it nineteen miles per hour. So she's going down, and you know she's being helped by the the, the river, right, and so. Then she goes the other way, upstream, she fights the current, right, not being able to go as fast. Uh, and, let's see. Um, going five miles an hour. Now again, you can figure this out without these equations, but I'm trying to use a quaint little example to help us learn something new. Something we can understand to learn something that we don't yet understand. So goes with the current, 19 miles per hour. If it goes against the current, she can only go five miles per hour. So we're gonna figure out how fast she's able to paddle and at the same time how fast the river is moving. Okay? Can you just guess it? Just say, well maybe maybe she's going this fast and then the river is this fast, so maybe she's going this fast, and the river is this fast. Oh, okay, I figured it out. Is that possible? you just guess how fast she might go? Maybe she goes, maybe she didn't pad paddle three miles an hour. Okay, well, let's try that. If she paddles three miles an hour, she's able to, in a lake, paddle three miles an hour. If she paddles three miles an hour, then she can't paddle five miles an hour going down the river. That's a good point, right? If she can only paddle three miles an hour, there's no so way she's going to be able to fight the uh, five and Okay, so we're between <coughs> five and 19. So as far as our guessing, it's not worth guessing anything between, or, or anything five or less, right? So if she can paddle six miles an hour, if she can paddle six miles an hour, right? And she's going 19 miles an hour down, down river. Then how fast must the river be going? 13, 13 yeah, 13 miles per hour. Okay, so that's true though. And the river goes 13 miles an hour, she paddles up the river at six miles an hour. Would she be going forward at all? She's able to paddle six miles an hour. We just figured out that the river must be going 13 miles an hour. If she's going this way, six miles per hour, and the river's pushing down this way, 13 miles per hour, she's going to be going. No, we're going to be going back. Because <coughs> in order for this in to work, slowly, man. Huh? In a slowly manner. In a slow manner, she'd be going backwards. Okay. So, what we've just done with this hypothetical, though, is we've written the two equations that we need to write. She has to be going. Wait, is oh, she has to be going upriver faster than 13 miles per hour, so she's going to be going 17 miles per hour. And well, no, no, the 13 is dependent on us assuming that she goes six miles an hour without any resistance, right? Okay, yeah, that's just based on this 19 miles per hour. So we is so why is the river is 19? Like, her top speed going down. 19 is her top speed. That means that she's, you know, she's going with the river. 
So her her speed and the river speed are working together. So in calm water, she can't go faster than 19. That's all. Okay. So it's between 19 and 5. Or 19 and 6. 19 and 6. Good. So we found a range. 19, 6 to 19. I guess it's 7. Let's see, let's see if, let, let's look at what we're doing here as we consider 19 miles an hour. And that is going to be our first equation. In our heads, we just kind of intuitively know that something's going to have to add, that something's going to have to uh, happen here to get 19 miles per hour, right? If I tell you that she goes this fast, right, then, well, maybe we do it a different way. If I tell you that she goes this fast, what do you do with 19 to figure out how fast the river must be going? Subtract her speed. Subtract her speed. Subtract her speed, right? And we get the river speed. Okay. Or put another way, could I say that her speed plus the river speed is? Is that true? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm writing it this way because it's going to be convenient for the text. Okay. Now, what can I do with her speed and the river speed? however you want, to get five miles per hour. Subtract both on both sides. Subtract, no, we, what we're actually doing is writing an entirely different equation. What could you do with her speed and the river speed to get five miles per hour? Subtract each one. Subtract what from what? Uh, Probably the smaller from the bigger, I don't know. Yeah, right? So, whichever is. minus x. So the river speed minus her speed must be five? Five? Yeah. Or with the river speed slower. Right. She must be able to paddle faster than the river, right? Because she's going forward. So it's actually her speed minus the river speed, right? She's going this way this fast. The river's taken away from her, but she's still able to maintain five miles an hour. So her speed minus the river speed, five miles per hour. We've got two different equations. Now we could do substitution here, but here's here's a convenient thing. Let's write those down. So that you oh, I see. So we just see this, this magic. Do these, do these equations make sense? Mm -hmm. Her speed plus river speed, they're working together. And they add up to 19 miles per hour. Here she's paddling with all her might, but she's losing uh, some speed because the, the, the current is pushing against her. Right? And she can only five miles per hour. So here is a cool thing. This is called elimination. Uh, are both sides of this equation equal? Hmm? I hope they are. It's an equation. Yes. Are both oh, sides of this equation that. equal? That's what you mean. Yes. Okay, now remember the scale here? What's the cardinal rule when I work with the scale? Or an equation. What's that? Keep it balanced. Both sides have to keep it balanced, right? So if I want to keep it balanced and I do something to this side, do the exact same thing to the other side. Not just something, but exactly the same. Or an equivalent thing, right? So like if I put five pounds on this side, and then I just have like an or, or like a, a rock, okay. So I have five pounds, like five one pound weights. And then the other hand I have a rock that I know weighs five pounds. And if I put them both on one of the five pound weights over here, and the one rock that I know weighs five pounds, is it gonna stay balanced? Yeah. yeah. Then I got five one pound weights here. That's something that I know is equivalent to five pounds. So I didn't add exactly the same thing, but I added equivalent things, things that are equal to each other. Okay? So as long as the two things are equal to each other, I can add it to both sides. So far so good? Okay. So what I do is something to well to this side. Yeah, I can go to my side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this out of the way here because I'm about to, to manipulate this equation here. Uh, so I'll move it to this here. This there. I'm going to work on this equation here. 
So just like we said, if, we, if on this side of the equation we added five pounds, and on this side of the equation we had a rock that weighs five pounds, right, it's okay. Even though they look different, they're the same. On this side, I'm going to add something. I'm going to add five. On this side of the equation, what would I have to add? Five. Or something that's the same as five. And you know what's the same as five? This, x minus y. I'm going to add, I'm going to add x minus y to this side. And I can do that because by this equation, 5 and x minus y are the same thing. They are equal to each other. They weigh the same. I can add it to both sides. Right, Dustin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to add 5 to this side and x minus y to this side because they are the same by this equation, by this diagram. I know that that's true. This is true. So I can add 5 and x minus y. One side the other. I could have 5 to this side and x minus y to this side, but that would just be nonsense. That wouldn't be useful. You know what's really useful when I add x minus y to this side is what's x plus x? x. 2x. 2x. And what is y minus y? 0. Yeah. That's why it's called elimination, because what happened to the y's? I thought you only had 2x and 1y. Oh, well, an x, 1x plus 1x is 2x. Oh, I understand. Was that someone who was thinking eight minutes? Like, we'll get it. Well, no. Because okay. it's 19 eight, plus sorry. five. Yes, sorry. 19 eight. plus five? Mm -hmm. So, 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 so two times her speed is 24, so her speed is. Well, I was thinking it was 16. I had it, but ah. I just thought it was okay. So, right? Yeah. Well, if her speed is 12, then what's the speed of the river? No. Speed 12 is the speed of the river. It's just in general? Well, just like here's the speed of the river. Right, the river has a certain speed, she has a certain speed. We know that now she is 12. So it has to be speed of like 6. Why 6? Minus y equals 5. Add y to both sides. 12 equals 5 plus y. Subtract 5, subtract 5. Here's one off. 7 is the speed of the river. Because 12 plus 7. Wow. You can go 18. I don't know what that means. You can go 6. Right. We could use the other equation. We could use this one. 12 plus y equals 19. And then just subtract 12. Subtract 12 from both sides, and y equals 7. Right. So that's what we call elimination. elimination. When we add the left sides of two equations and the right sides of the two equations, and in the process, one of those x's or y's, either one, gets completely eliminated. So rather than writing another equation based on a like older problem. Let's just take these two equations. And here's a new idea. We can actually add equations to other equations. We can add one equation to the other. And that just means I'll take the x's and y's on this side and combine them together, and the numbers on this side and combine them together. Okay. And in elimination, 
what happens in the process is either x or y goes away because it adds up to zero. This adds up to zero. So here, what do we get? We're going to add these two sides together. We're going to add x plus a negative x gives us zero. Zero x. So that's great. Um, the y's, 2y plus y is 3y. 2y plus 1y is 2y. And on the other side, 13 plus 5 is 18. And if y is 6, then we can use either of these equations to figure out what x is. Uh, I'll use this one since x is positive in this equation. So x plus 2 times 6 equals 13. x plus 12 equals 13. So x must be 1. Solution of 1 to 6. So we can add equations to other equations. Add two, two equations together. We can do that because the, two, the things we're adding are the same. They're equal to each other. So that's on the left, equal to the right. We add those two equations together. Everything's still balanced. Let me give you another one. Add the left sides together and the right sides together, assuming the left side is made of x's and y's and the right side is made of numbers. So we add the x's together, how many x's do we have? 4x. Four four so we add the y's together, what do we wind up with? Uh, that's the key, right? That's why we're doing this, that's why we're using this approach. When these happen to be the opposite of each other, they go away, they get eliminated, and on the right side we get 8 plus 12, 20, 20 divided by 4, five. now I know x is 5, I need to figure out what y is. I like to use the one where y is positive rather than negative. So 7 times 5 plus y equals 12. 35 plus y equals 12. y equals, subtract 35, negative, negative 23. So 5, 5, and negative 23. Yes? So like y or something just negative? Whatever equals is positive, like when you did it, well, yeah. it still is always going to be negative anyway, so you got to divide it still. Yeah, so if, uh, if negative y equals 4, then y must be equal to negative 4, right? I could verify right. that two different ways. Got to be equal to negative 4 because I got to be able to plug it in here and have it work, right? right? So negative, negative 4, that's the only number that negative of that would be positive. Just to make sure, I checked it. How did you get the 4x? So 7x minus 3x is 4x. And then divide by 4, you get x is 5. So let's do that in and change y is negative 23. Oh, okay. that uh, 2x minus y equals negative 11, and y plus 2x equals negative 13. Is that really going to throw you for much of a loop there? Side, we have negative 24. Yeah, since there's nothing that equals it, though, then it's just negative 24. Is that right? Well, because two x's cancel each other out, but two y's cancel each other out. Well, negative y plus y is 0, but what do we have? 2x plus 2 more x. Oh, sorry, 4x. Four 4x, four, four right. So it wouldn't matter if it was just switched around, you would, it still just mean the same thing? No, nope, we've got what's called the commutative property. 
So like uh, 3 plus 7, just giving you an idea of the, of the structure here. Um, 3 plus 7, 7 plus 3, is that any different? No. no, so we could, we, if we wanted to, we could just like say, ah, this, is, this looks weird. I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit. Write it as 2x plus y. And like everything yeah, lines up yeah. nicely. Okay. So I can rearrange the variables. Do it that way. So we find 4x equals negative 24 and x equals negative 6. And then uh, I'll plug it in here. It's 2x plus y, or two, sorry, 2 times negative 6 plus y equals negative 13. Negative 12 plus y equals negative 13. Add 12 on both sides, y must be negative 1. Negative 6, negative 1. You see those four problems there, 4, 6, 16, and 17.